Hey, who's driving that vehicle with the bristling defenses loaded with your long-awaited delivery of rippets? No one actually, if the Army has anything to say about it. With a look at some of the autonomous vehicle options on display at the Association of the United States Army's 2024 conference, here's our own Todd South. If anyone's been paying any attention to Army's technology needs in recent years, automation is at the top of that list. And now while the uh, aerial drones that the Army uses, the unmanned aerial systems or platforms, have been in existence for decades and have been improving vastly over the last couple of years especially, it's the ground vehicles that are really now taking center stage. So here at the Association of the U.S. Army's annual meeting and exposition in Washington, D.C., they have a few key companies are putting out platforms that they are either competing or want to compete for different types of contracts. Um, right now, the Army's already got the uh, a squad multi-purpose equipment transport, basically the SMET. It's kind of like a robotic mule that hauls gear around for soldiers that are dismounted on foot to save them time and energy. They're looking to add payloads to that particular platform. But some brand new offerings um, in the last year or two are coming forward. Some just unveiled uh, this week here at AUSA. And one of those is with uh, L3 Harris um, Technologies. They have uh, the diamond-backed it's a modular system, mostly for reconnaissance and surveillance. It's going to be offering packages and payloads that will do drone employment, um, RF sensing, optical sensing, electronic warfare. Overland AI company is working with L3 Harris, and they were part of the DARPA program. If you know DARPA, they created the stealth bomber and basically helped create the internet before there was an internet. Their program, the Rover program, really looked to see how you could do automated uh, ground vehicle work off-road. Now, all of us see a lot of the, you know, the different automated car services that are going up and people are testing those, everything uh, that you see in the civilian media, but on the military side, off-road capabilities are much more complex, and there really just isn't a civilian market for it, so these defense industry companies are the ones that are trying to meet that need. Uh, Teledyne FLIR is partnered with Textron Systems and How and How to create a kind of a 360-degree uh, situational awareness platform that they're calling Ripsaw. Now, the Ripsaw M3 just delivered a couple prototypes to the military for testing. Uh, they've gone over 4,700 miles of durability testing in just the last five years alone in some of their early prototypes and they're continuing to develop that variant and improve it, starting with the M5, now they're at the M3, different capabilities, different capacities, different distances. Um, those can go all kinds of different ranges, and it depends on the payload and the uh, weight that they're carrying. Now, lastly, of course, one that's actually already fielded and working with the Marines, though, not the Army right now, but also featured here, maybe something Army could consider, is Oshkosh Defense's uh, Rogue Fires platform. It's a, basically taking a, a platform um, similar to, say, like a JLTV or Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, um, removing all the stuff that the humans need, the seats and the steering wheels and whatnot, and mounting um, primarily missile or, or fires packages on that. Now, the Marines have been working on that. The Rogue Fires, uh, love those love those military acronyms. We've got uh, the Remote Operated Ground Unit for Expeditionary Fires. Now, Marines, um, they have to have Expeditionary in the title somewhere. Army needs to get more expeditionary. Um, that system is on display today. It's being tested and used out by the Marines in the Pacific, likely in joint and, um, and different types of exercises with the Army. So you have those three platforms all within spitting distance of each other here at the show, along with countless other automation types of software, platforms, vehicles, payloads, packaging all those together to give the Army a way to do different types of missions without putting soldiers in danger. I'm Todd South, this is Army Times.